is it Pascal or Pascal? Pascal. Okay. Dr. Pascal Mubinga, Mubinga, Mubinga is currently superintendent in the Franklin County Schools, but I think I am remembering correctly that we have invited you here perhaps in large measure to talk about where you were before, which I believe was at Jones County High School. And uh, the success that he had there, that for all I know had something to do with you now being superintendent in Franklin. But uh, he needs to leave at 10.15 in order to be back, I think, home at a meeting at 11.30, so we're going to ask you to come on up. Representative Blackwell and uh, all of you here as well. This is a great opportunity for me to be here and uh, share my experiences with uh, John Senior High School. Uh, I'm glad that uh, Benny came before me and uh, said a few things about turnaround versus uh, transformation. And I would like to say this, I have a PowerPoint, but I have a copy of this. I hope everybody have a handout. Looking at data from John Senior High School, I went to John Senior High School the last quarter of 2007, and I was there for a good three months, and I was able to get a school out of priority school. That was the first year we were able to move to a school of progress. And uh, saying about John Senior High School, this is one of the few high school in the state that was able to be turned around, and they were able to sustain it until today. Uh, John Tino High School is a B school. Since I left before Common Core, before Race to the Top, John Tino High School was a school of distinction, and now it's a B school. Seven years, they were able to sustain their work. And I'm gonna share with you how they were able to sustain their work because of the work that we did while I was there. Uh, the current principal of uh, John Senior High School was my assistant principal for one year. And if so well, then we were able to move him to the middle school. Then I was able to bring another guy that was uh, my assistant principal. When I left, I told the superintendent, this guy is the one that needs to take over after me. He was there for three years, he was able to sustain the work. So, looking at data, John Senior High School has done really well, and for some of you that may not be... Yeah, I have a spot, yeah. I have a PowerPoint. Do we have to put up there so that people here can see? just give us a couple of minutes we think we can fix this and I'd like the folks in the back to be able to see this very interesting data that uh, Dr. Kavinga has. Because I wanted you all to see this. All right, this is the result. Uh, I was appointed principal in 2008. That was uh, the last few months, and I was transitioning with another principal that was retiring. A few things, quick wins that we were able to address. 
uh, such as discipline problems, and the kids were getting suspended all the time. When I got there, I was able to take one of uh, the TA positions and say, that person got to be ISS. We don't want to suspend all these kids all the time, otherwise we won't get results. Just for three months, we were able to get out of that uh, status of priority school. Then at the beginning of the year, 2008, I met with my staff. And I told my staff, I said, look, we're going to be a school of distinction in about two years. They did not believe me. And uh, some of them even came to me later on. They confessed, said, we thought you were joking. Uh, I was very fortunate. The first year, uh, I had a turnover by 30%. That was good. Turnover sometimes was bad, but that was good for me. I had the opportunity to bring some other new folks that could see things differently. So we did really well. We got to the first year, 72.6, and they stopped believing. They said, wow, this can be done. Next year, 90. We were very close to be a school of excellence. Then everybody became believers. Uh, parents that were sending their kids to the middle school, they did not want to send them to the high school. They were going to surrounding schools. Illinois County, Onslo, Cataract, New Bern, they started coming to John Senior. Then, 88, when I left, came to DPI, did some good work as well. My folks that left there, they sustained the results until today. John Senior, when you're looking at demographic, they have about 60% uh, minority. Uh, Social economics, probably about 70%, free, uh, maybe 80 free and reduced lunch. But they became believers when we changed the culture and they were able to sustain the result. This is what we did. So we're able to establish high expectation for all. Even folks that were teaching there for 20 years, the result was not there. Uh, they were 20%, 30%. They were complacent. They were feeling comfortable with those kind of results. We said, this need to change. And parents that did not want to send their kids to our school, we had a conversation, open door policy. I did not only have quantitative data looking at numbers, I was able to look at qualitative data, call the community members and say, let's have a conversation. Why you don't want to bring your kids? I met with Fifth Base community. They were very instrumental to help me succeed. Say, so we listen to your vision. We think if this can be done, we're going to join you. First year, they were able to observe me. The second year, Fifth Base community, they were able to join me as well. So the change did not only happen with the principal. The principal was able to bring the whole team. This is what I tell a lot of principals when I work with them. It does not take one person to move the school around. It's going to take the whole. Education is one of the few fields when you have almost everybody with a college degree. I tell principals, use your folks. Pull them around the table. Get ideas from them. That's how you're going to get it done. If you want to run the school by yourself, you're going to fail. So my folks, they were able to listen to me. They came around the table. Pretty much maybe 85 to 90% of the decisions we made was as a team. That's how you get a buy-in. That's how they come on board. There were 10% that I said, that's mine. I have to make that decision. The culture change, as I go to other places, folks will call me and say, this is a data man. I go by numbers. I remove all the feelings. I got there, I told my staff, we're going to be a school of distinction. At that point, was you got to be 80% or higher. And I'll look at my, my students. If we have, let's example, 100 students, if we want to be 80%, I'm expecting 80 students to be able to be proficient. When I go down to the classroom level, if you have a teacher that have 20 students, I'm expecting 16 to pass, to be proficient. We want everybody to grow. We want everybody to get one year of instruction. But if I'm looking at proficiency, I was, I was really specific with my staff. And teachers, they knew at the beginning of the year, if I have 20, at least Eight, I mean, um, 20, 16, they got to be proficient. And we had a good instrument at that time. We used to use Classscape as our benchmark to monitor how those students were doing. I never been surprised at the end of the year when I was principal. I knew as we we're monitoring at the end of the year, we we're pretty close. That's the work we did. And teachers, they felt feeling comfortable. In the classroom, they knew what's the numbers we're looking for, 
what we're going to get at the end. We had a good instrument at that time was class A uh, as our benchmark. So as we got with teachers looking at data, looking at the practices, going to the classrooms, professional learning community was the key. We got together, talking with all those kids, why are these students performing at this level, what adjustment that we need to make so that we'll get a result. Accountability was there. If you're not performing, I made sure that we're documenting everything. If you're not the right person for the job, I was able to make sure that everything is in place. By the end of the year, we'll tell you you need to look for another employment. And that was the key as well, because the first year, when we were able to let some folks go, the folks that were there for so long, they got a message. That these guys mean means business, and every child got to learn. And if you are on the way for this kids not to learn, you need to go. So we're cele celebrating success all the time. And all the general funds that we had, I tell my staff, some of our students don't work for free. They work for something. We got to celebrate, and we're celebrating all the time. We got benchmark result. We got honor roll list. We're celebrating all the time. Something that I'll give credit to my uh, district leadership when I was there, the class size. Turnaround schools, it takes flexibility. It takes flexibility to be able to turn around some of the hard, tough environments. If you don't have the flexibility as a principal, it's hard to turn around your school. My superintendent, I'll give him credit for it, he was very flexible with me. I had some students who come to me, a freshman, reading a fifth grade level. So you expecting these kids to pass a ninth grade exam? That's about three or four years gap. But my superintendent was really good with me, gave me extra positions. <coughs> I was able for those freshmen, not only they have to pass English one, I was putting them in a read class, reading class, they gotta learn all these basic skills. I was able to put them in freshman academy where they were learning some of those basic skills to be able to tackle high school materials. And then they were taking English one. They had three courses to get them ready. So for me to be able to impact the love of those students who were coming to me three years behind, I have to have extra positions to make sure I offer those classes. And my superintendent was really good with my board at that time they were able to give me those special positions to address those issues. When I got a John Senior High School supplement was about $500. Surrounding district was pretty much about $1,500. When I lost my 30% of staff, my first year, I went to my superintendent, I said, these supplements is not gonna do it. We need to increase it. We got to the point where we were able to increase that to $1,200. Competitive. Compared to Craven County, Onslow, then some of the folks that did not want to even consider John Senior, they start coming because the difference was only about three hundred dollars. It came. I give my superintendent credit for that and my board as well. We're able to become competitive when it comes to supplements. I know research, as a baby said earlier, it takes good teachers when they close the classroom, impacting the learning of those students. Press was not number two, but I'll say this, you may have great teachers in the building, but if you don't have a great principal, this is, this is not going to be able to deliver. It takes a good principal to be able to establish those processes, structures for everybody to be able to achieve. Principals are very important to move any turnaround schools. As we all know, it's really hard to help principals. The pipeline is so limited nowadays. And turn turnover and mark principals like me, when I was principal, successful, and the PI came after me. And now I'm superintendent. So when you're looking at the benefit of staying in a school that you've been able to turn around, and you're looking at the potential, the money that you can make as well, as you move forward, you want to become assistant superintendent or superintendent, it's really hard to keep those principals in those buildings. There are wonderful programs, MSA programs. I give credit to NILA, Northeast Leadership Academy. Outstanding program uh, preparing uh, our principals. And that's a good pipeline. 
and also give credit to uh, Shutter Press with our program that's been taking some of these folks that went to MSA. MSA is good, but it takes more. You need some practitioners to work with those two, I mean, with those uh, candidates to get them ready for the next level. But there's another layer that I would like to add. Good, Nila, good with the program Shelly Price, but we gotta get to the point where you got these principals that's been successful, turning around schools, to be able to mentor. To mentor in the terms that you got those assistant principals, they gotta work under these principals. Sometimes it takes those practitioners that you have to work with so that they can see firsthand. I left John Senior High School in the term of four years. I have about six, pretty much 90% of the principals working there, they were under me, either teachers or assistant principals. They were able to learn, not only in school, but they were able to learn as I was doing their work, as I was empowering teachers, as I was bringing teachers around the table to make decisions. So that's really important. But if we have these principals coming, turn around schools, three years later, they take off, we're starting all over again. So my recommend, not my recommendation, my suggestion today to state legislatures that you are today, and uh, LEA as well, we gotta find a way of there are some principals that love the job of being a principal. They don't want to become superintendent. They don't want to go to central office. But if we can just find a way to keep them in those buildings, I think we're going to save a lot of money. But if we're going to keep on bringing new folks, going through that cycle, that's why we're going to still continue having those struggling schools. I think that's pretty much my 15 minutes that was given to me. Uh, my takeaway or something that I'd like to leave you with today, we got to be able to look outside of the box. We have great programs in the state. We have great folks that are willing to work with our students, but we got to find a way to keep them in those buildings. Well, I know you need to leave to get to another meeting, but do you have time for just a few questions? And you let me know. Are there members of the committee that would like to direct a question to Dr. Mamika? Maybe you're just so impressive and clear. <laughs> well, Linda, we can count on you. Well, mine's not a question. Mine's a comment. I would like you to know that we can keep it up here. We're very proud. Uh, Representative Goodman. Uh, one of the things that's probably as important as anything else is getting buy-in from the community. Did you have good community support uh, for your school? And did they embrace the change that you brought there? Which I, I, I think without that, it's hard to make it work. I agree with you completely. It takes a community uh, to move those school forward. John Senior High School was a place that uh, folks did not want to go. Um, Parents will send their kids to the elementary school or middle school. By the time they finish middle school, they go to other district. Um, when I got there, my first thing, I knew that data. That's qualitative data. I started pulling those parents and said, let's have a conversation. Why you don't want to put your kids here? And I said, I have an open door policy. Forget about what happened to the past. My predecessor, let's start fresh. So I had that open door policy. It took a year. Once we got the first results, they will all start embracing the change. Yeah, definitely it takes a community. Without that community support, you're not going to be able to move forward. Other, other. Representative Johnson. Okay. I'd like to know a little bit more about the mentoring, about how, how to accomplish that, how to be able to work, and what were the needs of the principal? I think when it comes to mentoring, like I said, uh, we have wonderful programs. I think the relationship is working with your assistant principals. They're seeing how you're making decisions. They're seeing how you're bringing them around the table as you're making decisions. That was the best mentoring process that I had in place. And uh, even when I left, and as they have a good rapport with them, they keep on calling me about things that may need to be done. Uh, when you go with an assistant principal <coughs> to that cycle, probably first year, second year, I'll advise two years. I think they've seen you do the work for two years, they should be ready to 
pretty much duplicate some of the work. And uh, I always say this, you guys, you're observing what we're doing, you got a recipe, two years later you should be able to be ready and move on and do the same thing. Uh, I, I have a question for you. I'm curious, now that you are superintendent in Franklin, based on what you learned and experienced and judged, what are you doing as superintendent in Franklin to try to spread the gospel, so to speak? Uh, that's a good question, Mark. Uh, I'm a practitioner. The things that I did as a principal, I'm bringing my principal along as well. We have seven local forming schools in Franklin County Schools out of 16. Uh, I've never been surprised as I was a principal. I'm not going to be surprised as a superintendent. I'm monitoring data. I'm monitoring benchmarks. I'm knocking on the road. By the end of the year, we may have a zero local performing school. Don't. We caught me on that, but I am monitoring that. I'm not. I'm. I'm very positive that I'm not going to be surprised at the end of the year. That's yeah. Correct. Yeah. So, so I'm not going to be surprised at the end of the year because my personality, my demeanor, building the capacity of my principals, and I don't leave it to my assistant superintendent. We're all coming together as we're looking at data. We're making adjustments. We're going to the building, and I had some comment that said. How do you find time to go even to the building? And um, looking at what's happening, I said, I have to inspect what we put in place. So we're monitoring that, and we're not going to be surprised at the end of the year. Let me, let me ask one follow-up question, if I may, since you're yes, being generous with your yes. time. You said in Jones, I think, that the first year that you lost about 30% of turnover, and that maybe that wasn't a bad thing. What are you doing in Franklin to um, dampen the kind of opposition that can arise in a community when long in place administrators and staff are sort of eased out if you will or they feel like and, and they start complaining to the people they go to church with and the school board how do you have a a, a process or a plan for dealing with that issue since people don't just go quietly into the night sometimes thank you representative blackwell that's a good question uh I'm a new in the superintendency. This is my sixth month, and I have my PR person, Patrick S. Uh, he can witness to this. Uh, I'm building rapport with my board members, and I'm bringing them along. And anytime we talk about benchmark, they are fully aware about the result that we're getting, and I'm taking them to the building to see what we're doing. And they start noticing who's the good principal, who's not. When I'm going to bring those recommendations, then I'm going to be surprised because I'm keeping them in the loop. And Patrick can testify to that. Anybody else? Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. It's an honor for me. Appreciate it. It's an honor for us. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you.